all praises to the Most High God, all Yahweh, praise and glory to Yahweh, 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 Love, honor, and respect to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, to His Holy Son, Yahweh Shai, who died for the 12 tribes of Israel. Double honors to the apostles of GMS, and to the four major prophets, the minor prophets, and the hopeful elect. The Aku, the brothers, the saints, who are preaching the word of God on the four corners of this earth, risking their lives day in and day out. And Shalom, peace and blessings to the brothers and sisters and children who are watching these videos together. We're on another lesson, and today is Sunday. I believe it's uh, June 4th. So these months were already six, halfway through the year. And uh, a lot of things are happening in this world. And, you know, uh, it's escalating in Russia and Ukraine. It's just NATO, the United States. I mean, the whole world is, uh, I got to tiptoe what I'm saying, but the whole world is about to be engulfed in World War III. And, uh, the first quarter of World War III started in uh, 2014 with the proxy wars. And, uh, and it continues today. It, the tensions are high in uh, the China Sea with Ch uh, China and Taiwan. Just the whole world is, uh, is, is out of control of what's happening here in the United States with uh, the economy, with the printing of money. It's nonstop and it's getting worse by the day. But uh, today, you know, I want to bring out, we're going to bring out the scriptures about Job, okay? And I'm gonna read a little bit about Job. It was, about, uh, it was during the times of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the book of Job is the story of a good man who suffers total disaster. Because we're gonna do part two about Paul. We just did it a few days ago about Paul, part one. And Paul was persecuted. And that's what we're going to talk about in part two. He was a man who was persecuting the church. He was with the Pharisees. He went to the schools. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. He went to the schools of the Pharisees. He was brought up to, uh, uh, with the Pharisees, with the Holy Scrolls, but they were ignorantly did not know the Son of Man, Yahweh Shai. He came to them and they rejected him. The only people that were with them was the uh, apostles and the prophets. The prophets were with Yahweh Shai. And there was people that did believe, but the majority of the people believed the Pharisees over the Son of Man, who you call Jesus Christ, and his ancient Hebrew is Yahweh Shai. So the majority of people were siding with the Pharisees, all right? And Paul was with them, and he persecuted the church. So going back to Job, where it said he was a good man who suffers total disaster, because people believe that good men that only bad people face disaster. And that's not true. God's people face disaster. Because God is testing them. And we're going to get into the holy book of Job. That's where you have to have faith and hope in God. So he loses all his children and property and is afflicted with a repulsive disease. Then in three series of poetic dialogue, the author shows how Job's friends and Job himself react to these calamities. And when you go into the story about Job, because Job gets very sick, where he has boils on his body besides a grapefruit. And his friends, 
that he loved dearly blamed Job that he must have did something bad in his life for this to happen to her, which was not true. Now, that's one of the greatest books in the Bible is Job. God himself who dealings whose dealings with mankind has been a prominent part of the discussion appears to Job. The friends of Job explain his sufferings in traditional religious terms. Since God, Yahweh, so they assume always rewards good and punishes evil. And this is what most people believe. You see those, uh, the Pope and the Cardinals in the Vatican, they make trillions of dollars. So people think, oh, there must be good men. And you see men, the Protestants, you see uh, like Joel Steen and T.D. Jakes and uh, TV, Trinity Broadcasting Network, they make millions and millions of dollars. They have planes, they have $10 million homes, 20, $30 million homes, they have yachts, they have all this wealth that people say, people believe because they have all this wealth that they must be good. And then they see a poor man and they believe a, a, a poor man in a garment, well, he must be cursed. God must hate that man. Or uh, when you actually see the apostles and the prophets, the servants of God, people look at them as bums, as trash, as the scum of this earth. So most people believe if you have money, you must be a good person. And someone that has nothing, you must be a bad person. But that's why you need to read the book of Job. We're going to read it. He says, uh, people think they always, uh, always reward good and punish as evil. But the sufferings of Job can only mean that he has sinned against God. But for Job, this is too simple. He does not deserve such cruel punishment because he has been an unusually good and religious, righteous man, a man of worship, who worships God. He cannot understand how God, Yahweh, can let such, so much evil happen to one like himself. And he boldly challenges Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai. Job does not lose his faith, but he does he does long to be justified before God and to regain his honor as a good man. He wants to regain his honor in front of his his friends that are looking down on him because of this great suffering. And Job did nothing wrong. But he he, he talks to God and he wants to know why things are happening to him and why people are looking down on him thinking that he did evil against God when, when he never did evil against God. He always praised God. God does not give an answer to Job's questions but he does respond to Job's faith by overwhelming him with a poetic picture of his divine power and wisdom. Job then humbly acknowledges God as wise and great and repents of his wild and angry words he had used by questioning God. The point of the story, you never uh, question God. God could do whatever he pleases. He's the creator. He, he created righteous men and he created evil men. God could do what he pleases. We're, he created us and he could do whatever he wants with us. God, he, he, he acknowledged that God, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is wise and great and repents of his wild and angry words he had used. The prose conclusion records how Job is restored to his former condition with even greater prosperity than before. God, Yahweh, reprimands Job's friends for speaking evil 
against Job for failing to understand the meaning of Job's sufferings. Only Job had really sensed that God is greater than the traditional religious religion and depicted had depicted him. So this is Job chapter 1 verse 1. Satan tests Job. And there was a man named Job living in the land of Uz who worshipped Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai and was faithful to him. He was a righteous man. He was a good man. Careful not to do anything evil. He had seven sons and three daughters and owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 1,000 head of cattle, and 500 donkeys. He also had a large number he also had a large number of servants. He was the richest man in the east. Verse 4. Job's sons used to take turns giving a feast to which all the others would come, and they always invited their three sisters to join them. The morning after each feast, Job would get up early and offer sacrifices for each of his children in order to purify them. He always did this because he thought that one of them, one of his children might have sinned by insulting God Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai unintentionally. So he would sacrifice and the word sacrifice means to make holy. Just like how God's going to destroy this earth because of the wickedness of this earth. He's going to sacrifice. The only people that are going to be saved are the apostles, the prophets, the 144,000 and the great multitude of brothers, women and children who come to God in the ancient Hebrew of Yehovah Shimei Shai. But the others wax cold in wickedness. So they will be Purged, they will be sacrificed, and this world will be made holy again. And when the day came for the heavenly beings, the angels, to appear before the Lord God, Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahushai, Satan was there among them. And the Lord asked him, What have you been doing? the Most High. He's asking Satan, what have you been doing? So Satan, the angels came and Satan came. And Satan answered, I have been walking here and there roaming the earth. Did you notice my servant? This is the Most High. Yahweh Shai telling Satan did you notice my servant Job? The Lord asked. There is no one on earth as faithful and good as he is. He worships me and is careful not to do anything evil. So he was a righteous man. He prayed to God daily, every day. And Satan replied, Would Job worship you if he got nothing out of it? You've got to remember, when Job lived, he never knew what suffering was. He never knew what pain was. He was a righteous man since he was born. He had sons and he had daughters. He had a family. He had all this cattle. Every day was like peaceful. And his, his home and his, his he had... All, all these uh, thousands of acres and he had all these animals and trees and, and streams and lakes he lived a righteous life he lived in peace but this is Satan now he's coming to God and he's saying 
Well, you gave Job everything. He knows no suffering. He knows nothing about pain. Would Job, this is Satan, would Job worship you if he got nothing out of it? You have always protected him. When, we, when he says protect, that means angels were always around Job. No demons could get to him. And his family and everything he owns you bless everything he does and you have given him enough cattle to fill the whole country but now suppose you take away everything he has and he will curse you to your face so he's saying if you take everything away from him and you bring doom and destruction, doom and gloom to him and his family, he's saying he, that he would curse you, to curse God to his face. So, a lot of people don't understand that. Well, let me continue, then I'll explain. Verse 12, and God, Yahweh, Hashim Yahweh Shai says, all right, the Lord Yahweh said to Satan, everything he has is in your power. He gives Satan the green light to go after Job and his family and all his riches. But you must not hurt Job himself. You must not kill Job, but you can attack him. So Satan left. So this was a wager. A lot of people don't believe the Most High could do whatever he wants. This was a wager. This was a bet between the Most High and Satan. God's wager, did God make a bet with Satan over Job? God, the Most High's cosmic bet with the devil. Go back to 12. God says, all right, the Lord Yahweh said, to Satan, everything he has is in your power, but you must not kill, you must not hurt Jacob, you must not hurt Job himself, so Satan left. Now let's go to the holy book of Isaiah. What people don't know is, his holy son, his first creation, the Most High's first creation, is on the right hand side. That's his son, Yahweh Shai, who you call Jesus Christ. And on his left hand side, is his son Satan Bella's above Satan Satan is a pit bull that's the most highest pit bull on the left hand side Satan takes orders he doesn't do whatever he wants to do are his legions of demons he has generals captains lieutenants and soldiers and they wait upon the Most High's orders. He controls the right, and he controls the left. Like I say, you're not gonna learn this in those wacky, tacky Christian churches, because they only give you the honey. They don't give you the bitter. They don't give you the, uh, the bitter herbs, the ginger. They only give you the honey and everything that's sweet. Remember, if you, if you eat too much sweets, what happens to you? You get diabetes and you die. What kills diabetes? Bitter herbs, ginger, beets, turmeric, and pepper. You can't always have sugar in your mouth. You have to have a little bitterness to kill diseases. Now we're going to go to Isaiah. The holy book of Isaiah. And you can't tap around, you can't tap around, tap dance around this scripture. And there's many more. But I want to stay on 
Job today. So the holy book of Job, Isaiah chapter 45, verse 7. This is the most high. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 7. I form the light and I create darkness. I make peace and I create evil. I, the Lord God, Yahweh, Baha Hashem, Yahweh Shai, do all these things. Near, I create both light and darkness. I bring blessing and I bring evil. I, the Lord God, do all these things. The Most High controls the right and he controls the left. Satan is the Most High's pit bull. Going back to Job, and that's when he told Satan and gave him the green light, go get him. Go sick him. Like I said, the Most High could do whatever he wants. Job's children and wealth are destroyed. Verse 13. And one day when Job's children were having a feast at the home of their oldest brother, a messenger came running to Job, one of his servants. We were plowing the fields with the oxen, he said, and the, don the donkeys were in a nearby pasture. Suddenly, the Sabaeans attacked and stole them all. They killed every one of your servants except me. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. Satan goes and he kills his servants. And they stole, all, uh, stole the animals. Verse 16, And before he had finished speaking, another servant came and said, Lightning struck the sheep and the shepherds and kill them all. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. So now all his sheep and all his shepherds are dead. Verse 17, and before he had finished speaking, Job is just absorbing all this bad news. He's never had nothing bad come against him, but now everything is falling. His whole world is upside down. And before he had finished speaking, another servant came and said, Three bands of Chaldeans raided and attacked us, took away the camels, and killed all of your servants except me. These were in different regions of servants. We have servants on this side of his home, the east side of his home. He had servants on the south side. He had servants on the the west side of his home, and he had servants on the north side. So every side is getting attacked. And he said, three bands of Chaldeans raided and attacked us, took away the camels and killed all your servants except me. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. And before he had finished speaking, another servant came and said, your children were having a feast. His sons and daughters were having a great time. They were having a feast, eating and drinking the best wine. He says, your children were having a feast at the home of your oldest, of your oldest son when a storm swept in from the desert. It blew the house down and killed them all. Did you hear that one? A, a storm swept in in front in, uh, in, uh, from a desert. It blew the house down and killed them all. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. And then Job got up and tore his clothes in grief and sorrow. He shaved his head, and that was a, a, a Hebrew practice 
when you lose someone in your family, you shaved your head and you ripped your clothes and you rolled in the dirt, in the dust of the earth. And he shaved his head and threw himself face downward on the ground and he said, I was born with nothing and I will die with nothing. And the Lord God, Yahweh, gave and now he has taken away. That's called perfect balance. I've always said since I was young, be grateful for what you have, for soon there will be nothing. I was born with nothing and I will die with nothing. The Lord God, Yahweh, gave and now he has taken away. May his name be praised forever and ever, so let it be true. Now this is a righteous man. Now a wicked man would blame God. If they came down with cancer, came down with AIDS, came down with diabetes, with all the diseases under the, on this earth. Wicked people blame God for when tragedy comes. But a righteous man will praise the Most High's name forever. In spite of everything that had happened, Job did not sin by blaming God. He never blamed Yahweh Hashem Shai. Chapter 2, Satan tests Job again. And when the day came for the heavens, the heavenly beings, the angels to appear before Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai again, Satan was there among them. And the Lord asked him, where have you been? And Satan answered, I have been walking here and there, roaming the earth. Verse 3. Did you notice my servant Job? The Lord asked. There is no one on earth as faithful and as good as he is. He worships me and is careful not to do anything evil. You persuaded me to let you attack him for no reason at all. But Job is as faithful as ever. You you killed all his animals and you killed all his children and Job is still faithful to me. Now Satan replies, a man will give up everything in order to stay alive. Here comes another bet, another wager. Satan is talking to the Most High. He says, well, let's make another bet. Satan replied, a man will give up everything in order to stay alive. But now suppose you hurt his body, attack his body, he will curse you to your face. So the Most High God said to Satan, all right, he is in your power, but you are not to kill him. Then Satan left the Lord's presence and made sores break out all over Job's body. And Job went and sat by the garbage dump and took a piece of broken potter to scrape his sores. His wife said to him, you are still as faithful as ever, aren't you? Why don't you curse God and die? His own wife said this. Because women only want blessings. They only want the good times. Just like that song, uh, Cindy Lauper, Girls Just Want to Have Fun. 99.9. .9, they just want to have fun. They definitely don't want to suffer. But God gives life and the Most High takes away your life.
That's why a righteous man has gratitude. Look up the word gratitude. Be grateful for everything that God has given you. Not just, I'm not just talking about stupid things like material things or cars or houses. Man. That That's meaningless to a righteous man. Having eyes to see, having a mouth, having a tongue to taste, having ears to hear, having hands to touch, having arms, having a heart, lungs, kidneys, liver, legs, feet to stand, to have balance. That where you should have gratitude. So his wife said to him, when she seen these sores, like I said, he had sores big as grapefruit, grapefruit all around his body. Nobody, his wife didn't even want to be near him. And she said, why don't you just curse God? She looked down on him that he, she did, he did something wrong and she didn't want nothing to do with it. She, he wanted, she wanted to see him die because how he looked on his outside appearance. And his wife said to him, you are still as faithful as ever, aren't you? Why don't you curse God and die? And Job answered, you are talking nonsense. When God sends us something good, we welcome it. How come we complain when he sends us trouble. Even in all the sufferings, Job said nothing against God. He never said nothing because he understood the power of God. God could do whatever he pleases. This is his movie. The Bible is his story. And it's about his son, his only begotten son. And his son, Yahawashai in the ancient Hebrew, and most of you new brothers and sisters, a lot of you don't know. And now you know the ancient Hebrew name. You used to go by Jesus Christ in the English. You Latin brothers and sisters would call him Jesus in the Latin and different languages. But he has an ancient Hebrew name. And that when you first probably got on these channels and found brothers talking about Yahweh Shem you probably said something ignorantly in your mind. Just like Job's wife. Probably said, oh, that's not the name. Oh, these guys are crazy. That saying something ignorantly. Just like when Paul went after the church. He went after anybody that called upon Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh and he chased them and sentenced them to death. So Job's friends come. Three of Job's friends were Aliphaz, Faz, from the city of Teman, Bilidad, from the land of Shu, and Zophar from the land of Namiah. And when they heard 